Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of eCoffee with Experts. I'm your host, Matt Fraser. And on this episode, I have a very special guest with me, Jeff, Jeff Sauer. Jeff is the founder of Data Driven You. He's also an agency coach. He previously owned an agency, scaled it, sold it. He's a business coach, lecturer, and a digital nomad. And he is a firm believer in digital and data-driven marketing. He was named one of the top 25 most influential PPC experts. And his work has been featured in many industry publications and best-sell lists. Uh, Jeff has turned 14,000 digital marketers into Google certified professionals, in addition to delivering more than 100 keynote presentations and workshops in 15 different countries around the world. When not working on marketing campaigns for clients, Jeff enjoys traveling with his wife and family around the globe. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Hey, no problem. Hey, yeah. Hey, Jeff, so how would your university professors describe you as a student? Um, it's funny. I had one professor in particular who thought that I was never going to make it or never going to be anything. Um, oh, wow. Because I, I was definitely... Um, I, I got on his nerves because I didn't really want to listen to him. I was always looking ah. for a way to do things more efficiently and more okay. effectively. And I thought that uh-huh. he was sort of trapped in the old way of doing things. And so I, I was always a futurist and I always one thinking about how to do the most effort or the, the wor- most work yeah. throughput with the least amount of effort. Wow. <laughs> that's kind of and I'm cool. still that that's way, just, by the way. That's, you, yeah, yeah, well, it's a good thing. It's a good quality to have. I'm, I'm the exact same way. <laughs> I take it you pass his class, obviously. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right on. Hey, do you think any of your former professors would be interested in becoming digital marketing consultants? I'm looking back. Yeah, it's funny. I, I was always inspired by some of my professors who were. Like I, I oh, went yeah. to school for computer science starting in 1999. Okay. And wow. I, and I graduated in 2003 and that was like, I saw the wave of like the dot-com boom, people wow, dropping yeah. out, boom becoming bust. consultants. I, you know, my, my instructors had pagers like just, you know, on them, like, oh, any point, yeah. like in the middle of yeah. class, they'd like have to go answer the page and go and like do stuff, you know? So like I saw all these people who were consultants or who were really in the real world. Those are always my favorite professors as well. People who yeah. were out there, practitioners who were teaching because they wanted to, or they wanted to give back. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I saw people do that. And then, um, you know, when I do talk to professors, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I still teach at the same university that I graduated from. Um, yeah. When I see people, they're like, holy crap, you really made something out of yourself, you know? So that, that was pretty yeah. fun to see um, that. Yeah, that's awesome. So what inspired you to pursue digital marketing? I know you you'd mentioned you were in computer sciences and, and programming or, or whichever. Yeah. Um, how did you make the jump from that to getting into digital marketing? Yeah. So I can say laziness to a certain extent. Like I was a pretty, I'm a pretty, I was a good coder. I always did really well in school. Uh-huh. Um, I probably could have been a software engineer pretty easily and been successful yeah. at it, but I didn't really it was like the internet was just starting and Uh the only options though, the only jobs were in C plus plus programming or mainframe programming. So there was really no web programmer job. Mm. Like it was before web 2.0. So I couldn't really, like, I was like, I had learned how to do JavaScript. I had learned how to do like cold fusion and PHP stuff Mm -hmm. while I was in college. Then I graduate Mm -hmm. and there's no jobs doing that. Okay. Well, wow. You know, what am I supposed to do? And so there's like about probably a three year gap before it took off again, where I was like, Uh okay, well I have to go and do something. And so I, I sort of went into just trying to find any job. And then, um, honestly, the job market didn't really help me. Um, I didn't make enough money to support my ambition. And so I, Mm. I, sort of got into a lot of debt and Mm -hmm. um, I started side hustling in order to get, pay pay off all my credit card bills, pay off the, you know, the student loans and all that stuff. So I I I basically side hustled my way into things. And and the thing that you could get paid when you're 22 years old was creating websites for people. (laughs) People always, it was was an understandable thing in the mid two thousands that everybody needed a website. Most people didn't Mm -hmm. have it. The barrier mm-hmm. of entry was just like, hey, as long as it works on the internet, I'm fine. We didn't really have to mm-hmm. do much of security. Didn't really have to yeah. I mean, cloud hosting was basically a brand new thing. Um, and so wow. it wasn't really a big deal to people to have to trust me to do it. Um, mm-hmm. But not that long after it, they're like, okay, I paid you a couple thousand dollars for a website. How do I get people to go to it? How do I get people to see it? And that's, <laughs> there that's you go. The, I, I was a marketer. Where... I was minted a marketer because I was making their website. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a familiar story that a lot of people, how they've started out, they started out doing websites. Um, 
in, in that regard. I, I was the same way. I went back to school and took web design. And then people were like, why well, do I get traffic to it? I'm like, well, that's interesting. I got to learn how to do that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what do you love most about digital marketing? Um, I think the most, the thing I like the most about it is that it's, it's an impact you can do without really having to leave your house. <laughs> like it's something you can do from yeah. anywhere. And so I definitely, the, the work from fine. anywhere and the understanding of it. And I also liked it because it was, it was such a new industry that, mm-hmm. and I was so green mm-hmm. that I, I always knew that I knew more than the next person. And, and mm-hmm. that's all that I needed at that point. And so if I would have yeah. gone into a more established entrenched industry, I would have had to put in five, 10 years paying my dues, you know, yeah. the whole time to get there. And I, that wasn't my ambition and that wasn't my personality. Yeah. And you've, you've established yourself as an expert, obviously, um, for anybody who knows about you. What influenced you to focus on web analytics? Because I know that's, I mean, I know you know, because I know of you and I've been on connected to you in, in your email list and so on and so forth and for many, many years. Um, but I know that you specifically love talking about web analytics or, or mm-hmm. it's, 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 you know, it's your thing. <laughs> Even though you don't, you yeah. have to know, you, you do know other parts, but uh, my question yeah. is what, what was it that gravitated you towards that part of digital Yeah, marketing? so it's, it's funny. In my agency world, in my agency days, the day-to-day growing this agency, you know, significantly, yeah. I did almost no web analytics. <laughs> um, yeah. I was, I was, I, I had set up, I, I set up a PPC and a SEO practice and they were mm-hmm. sort of both going at the same time. Some clients would take on both. Some would take on just the PPC. Some would take on just the SEO. Um, uh-huh. And the PPC business took off like crazy um, to the point where like I, I was, I, I I just knew how to get results. Like I understand PPC, yeah. like I, I could just do it every day and, or I could do that for anybody and I'd get really good results, but I got sort of like, okay, is this it? Is it just really just uh-huh. me sitting in a spreadsheet? There didn't really seem like, like I was like, I solved this problem within about six months and now uh-huh. it's just repeating it. And I was like, is that the rest of my career? Just, just doing the same thing over and over again. It got yeah. sort of boring to me because I had, had achieved success so quickly and mm-hmm. it was like so much, it was running laps around anybody else. Every other, still yeah. now I could probably run laps around digital agencies with people who don't get it. They just didn't get it. And it came to me so quickly yeah. that I was like, there's gotta be something more. Right. Um, yeah. And then SEO, I actually didn't have as much success from an agency perspective. I never really uh-huh. found a way to make it as a practice because there was too many variables and I didn't yeah. really understand how to charge for it, how to guarantee. I couldn't guarantee success. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. like, it was the whole thing where like you talk to a client with a straight face, be like, Hey, it could take three to six months for these changes to take effect. And it's like, how many times can you say that before you're like, am I even telling the truth? Like, I know that it takes as yeah. long. I know like, you know, it, it was, just, it was too far out of my control. PPC yeah. was too far in my control. Cause I was just getting great results. And then, the uh-huh. analytics is this thing right in the middle is sort of like, okay, well, analytics involves technical. So it's going back to my programming background. I have to see JavaScript. So it's a little bit more um, using my that skill set. It's a little bit more discreet, meaning that I can go in there and be the hero, fix somebody's analytics or get them the insights, train them, everything, and then be done with it. So it's not as much of a long-term commitment as opposed okay. to like being on a retainer. <clears throat> somebody you're just doing their stuff for years. Like we've had yeah. my agency the same client for 10 plus years. It's like, that just, that just wasn't my idea of, of what to do. And then frankly, the final part was that I went out on my own and I knew that I couldn't be branded as an analytics guy, a PPC guy, or an S and an SEO guy all in one. Uh, you have to pick your lane. And so I picked the lane of the one that I knew I could get gigs. It could satisfy my lifestyle. So I chose it <laughs> funny enough, not, not because I was like, it was the thing that I was the best at. It was the one that I thought was the best one to go to my next chapter. Okay. That's very, very interesting. Yeah. I was mentioning before we uh, started on camera that at one point you send out an email to your list about the imposter syndrome, uh, which helped me tremendously in my life. It kind of revealed that to me. Have you yourself ever suffered from that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, The, the the other side of the coin of being being really good at PPC is and being young is that nobody not you know did people trust me and did I really belong there or did I just fake oh. my way into it until I made it ah, right and then the analytics thing because I had cut my teeth and been really accomplished in the PPC world was I really qualified to be an analytics person right um, yeah you know especially when I, I everything I've taught to anybody else I've learned from somebody else right so it's like yeah I had my influences and so there's a certain point where like 
you're learning and then you switch off from learning to teaching. And that that's definitely a trip, right? Like, Hey, I'm no longer learning. I'm now the guy who has to come up with the answers. That's a, that wow. was a weird, interesting transition for me. And, and the, now I'm fine with it. Cause I'm still learning. Like I'm learning something every day, especially with yeah. GA4. I have to read, yeah. I've had to retrain my brain significantly. So, um, wow. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Well, uh, would you give any advice to, what advice would you give to agency owners or people who who feel like they're frauds? I mean, you are a fraud to a certain extent, right? So just embrace it. Get, to, yeah. You know, like it, there are some parts that you like. Nobody's ever qualified. We're in an industry where there's really very few meaningful certifications. There's like Google yeah. tests and stuff like that. There, there, like uh-huh. nobody really. You didn't have to go to school to do this. So, so in some way no, you you're not qualified. In some ways, you are qualified. I think that if you're interested in this area and you take a deep under or you take an understanding of it, you read articles, you read several sources a week about what's going on, then you're already yeah. further ahead than 99, 95% of practitioners. If you actually wow. get a chance to do it, then you're probably a couple under the, you know, in the 98 percentile, then wow. it's like, okay, well, you already know more than the next person. It's a specialty. So you've specialized versus other people who you're, who are your clients. They're generalists. They're basically gen, running general marketing for a company. They might spend yeah. an hour here talking about lead generation, an hour talking about their, their ad and the, and the yellow pages, they might spend an yeah. hour on a radio ad and then they have paid media 15 minutes to an hour with you. That's all they really care about. So of course they're relying yeah. on you to be the deep expert. And so when you think yeah. about it that way, you probably are worthy of being there and, and deserving of being there as long as you do what you say you're going to do. Yeah, absolutely. Would you say that getting certification helps in some ways then? Since there, since you don't have to go to school for it, like in regards, maybe yeah. I mean, for me, it was a big thing to get my Google to get my Google Ad certification was was an absolute uh, waypoint for me that I was qualified. Yeah. Um, that the, back then the Google Ad certificate, I think it still does, but it came with like a spend requirement. You needed to manage a certain amount of spend. Um, yeah. So I, I was like a thousand in spend over the ninety days, and then pass the test, and then you're individually certified. And then I think it was ten thousand and two tests yeah. to be company certified. So yeah, I, I made up a second employee and got company certified. Um, oh, right on. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, I created a, a persona and that one passed a test and that was how I got certified. And I was like, okay, now, now if Google thinks that I'm there, then I think I'm certified. Plus, um, yeah. eventually we had stuff like Google reps. We had competitive intelligence where I could see what people's results were. And then I knew uh-huh. I could, I can, it's, it's almost like seeing the matrix. I can look at somebody's numbers yeah. and I can I find inefficiencies and say, yep, I can fix that. And then I know I can, because I, I can tell where they're out of whack or, or if you have enough yeah. experience. And that was really what drew me yeah. into the agency world is that I get to wow. have all these different experiences. I get to see tons of different accounts and make comparisons and, and really spread the ideas across um, different wow. accounts, different areas. That's amazing. And what inspired you to start Data Driven You? Was it a desire to give back, like you said, and, and teach and help others in, in regards to what you've learned or other reasons? Yeah. yeah. So I, I I knew that I needed to leave the agency world because I was doing a lot of work, making lots of money for very, very large companies. And I didn't really, yeah. um, and, and also making suggestions to large companies that they would never implement and they would never do. So it was like falling on deaf ears. And I was like, mm. I need to really, I really want to have a product. Um, I also okay. like the business model of having a product more than I like the business model of of services because sure. the services model, it's very human intensive. Um, yeah. you, you make your margin off of either paying your employees less or the people that you have, right? So keeping your expenses low is your profit yeah. versus a product. It's you go out there and you get more, you sell more, you you get more, you use ads to sell more. You you just, if you generate more business, it brings more margin to the business itself. Yeah. And so I like the business model better. And I wanted that challenge of, of having a product of my own to market. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, and then the, 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 the just, just to follow up, the, then the reason why yeah. the product itself is teaching is because that's it. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, if, if all said and done, I'm, I'm reaching more people and I'm spreading the good word about digital marketing in a way that I could yeah. never do inside of an agency. Yeah. And you've done an amazing job. I mean, I've taken a lot of your courses and and received tremendous value and benefit from them. So thank you for that. Uh, what is your vision for Data Driven You? Yeah, so um, our vision is to 
like I have, I have a few different things. So like a mission sure. or one, one of the goals that I have is to have a million students is to get a million oh, people wow. to learn with us, which is, you know, a long way away where maybe, maybe, um, 5% of the way there with 50,000 accounts on our site. So it's going to be a while, but, but that's just like, sort of like a number just out there. It's like, Hey, I'd like sure. to, do that. but really the goal is to offer and inspire people to become better and more interested in digital marketing yeah. through various levels of training programs based on their needs. So if they want to do it themselves, yeah. we have, we have SOPs or standard operating procedures they can download and do it themselves. Oh, Those yeah. are either free or inexpensive. Then we have yeah. classes, the pre-recorded ones, which it sounds like you've taken a few of those. I, I know you've yeah. taken a few of those. Then we have certifications. And then, and then the final level is teaching people how to make money off of their skills. So what I call yeah. our agency programs or our freelancer programs. So okay. I'm, I'm my, my transition was side hustle to get out of debt, use that skill to get to leverage more, more things and then make money to get, you know, actually make real money by going into business for myself. That was yeah. my journey. And I think that's like the most freeing thing that I ever did and that a lot of people can do. So I want to yeah. pattern data driven around that, like, Hey, get, 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 the interest you have, get the skills you need, and then get yourself a better future by applying yeah. those skills to the companies that need you. <clears throat> so if someone wants to learn about digital marketing, they can do the whole thing. They can come to Data Driven You. They can learn about digital marketing. They can get SOPs that help them to execute it and learn it, get certified, and then also learn how to run the business side of things through it. 100%. Yeah. That, that, that is it, awesome. Especially for Google Analytics 4, we have a full yes. vertical integration where you can start with how to yeah. do it and checklist all the way to technique teaching with me all the way to certification and yeah. a sales deck that will sell your own services. Wow. Okay. Let's talk about that. Google analytics for, you know, for those of people who may not know what it is just because I always like to pre assume that someone's listening to this. It's maybe for the first time. They don't even know what GA4 is. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah so, so back in the day, there was like, no way to know if people went to your website. So when I was a web designer, I'd create people a web a website and I'd throw it out there and, and there'd be something on the internet. Um, an example would be a restaurant's website. So a restaurant yeah. in Minnesota. And they're like, okay, well, how many people went to the site? And I'd say, I have no idea. <laughs> like <laughs> you made me design the website, not to tell you how many people went to it. Right. Yeah. And then, so then, and, and, and so I did some research and my web host had a stats package that would just tell you how many hits you had, like how many different hits yeah. went to your site. And that, and I was like, like okay, I like think stat counter. Exactly. A stat, basically yeah. a stat counter. Exactly. So they called them stats back then. And, yeah. um, and that, that was what happened. You just have this, you'd log into this thing or somebody would email you a report and it would tell you how many hits you had. It, it wasn't qualified, whether it was a bot or a person, it was, it was like what resource it was just, it was, really not meaningful at all, but it was all we had. Um, yeah. And then Google was like, okay, this is right when they launched their Google AdWords ad service. And it turns out that nobody wanted to buy ads unless they had the answer to what do people do when they use the ads? They wanted some yeah. kind of yeah. measurement thing, right? And so they they bought a piece of software that, did, that provided the stats, slapped a coat of paint on it, called it Google Analytics, and yeah. they gave it away for free. It, you know, usually these things were pretty expensive. It's a free cloud-based analytics tool that anybody could use at first, only if you had a Google AdWords account, then anybody. Yeah. And that, it, be, it you know, went from, this is like 2005, 2006. It went from like this free thing for Google Ads users that by like 2008, 100 million accounts were out there. And now wow. there's over 150 million websites that use Google Analytics. So it became the industry wow. standard for doing something because everything else was pretty bad and it, and yeah, it was, was good. Yeah. It cost you a lot of money. Um, yeah. Well then, so they, they, and that's, you know, some 2005 to two, then in 2008, they released the second version of it. 2011 or 2013, they announced the third version of it, which is called Universal. And mm -hmm. then in 2020, they in, introduced, they announced the fourth version of it, which we're calling GA4. And for the first time ever, GA4, they basically said, we're not going to, we're not, it's not just like an upgrade where you click on a button and you went from three to four. We're yeah. going to delete all your old data yeah. off the internet. We're going to delete everything yeah. because your old data was a privacy nightmare. 
we collected IP addresses that we don't really want to store in our books. We collect, you might've had an email address in the data that's against GDPR. Um, yeah. You might, you know, there's all kinds of different privacy rules that didn't exist in 2005 oh, okay. that, that were sticking in the data. So they're like, Hey, we need, we're getting sued left and right. We have all this liability okay. on the books to store your data for the last 15 years. We have to wipe out everything in order to not be sued anymore. And in order to be compliant with all these new rules. And so wow. we're, the, we're sort of like the fallout here where even if we were good stewards, we did things right. Google's not giving it. I mean, they're wiping everybody out and you're making everybody start fresh on July 1 of 2023. So this is a huge update then. It's a complete replatforming, complete reimagination of it. Um, the way that I describe it to people is that it, the, you know, so the first Google Analytics, which was called Urchin that Google bought and then turned into Google Analytics was started in 1999. Yeah. And that at something from 1999 basically still works now. <laughs> so 20 oh, wow. plus years later, that same code base is there. And uh -huh. it, it causes a lot of problems. It causes a lot of, a lot of breakages and stuff like that. The new GA4 is built for mobile. It's built for uh -huh. apps. It's built for the modern world, which is a lot more lightweight, privacy centric, not relying as much on cookies, not relying as much on collecting personal or invasive information. Yeah. It's a complete replatforming. Wow. You know, Jeff, I interview a lot of people and I talk to a lot of agency owners because <clears throat> we do that. <laughs> and there's, and I, I'm on LinkedIn. I've seen you on LinkedIn. There's so many people who are frustrated with GA4. Yeah. What are some of the biggest, you know, challenges with GA4? <laughs> like, what are some of the biggest yeah. changes coming, I guess? First of all, like... Yeah. Yeah, so what are first some of the biggest changes coming with GA4? My apologies. <clears throat> yeah, the, the biggest change is that they introduced this new thing that that was really wasn't ready for prime time. It didn't look like the old one. It was slower. It not, I mean, reports still don't always work properly. It was sort of rushed out. And then yeah. not only was it rushed out, it never went to an alpha phase. It never went to a beta phase. They said this is just live. And they said, yeah, here's, the exactly. new, here's the new platform. You have to use it. And we recommend yeah. it and they like sort of They've, vanish the other one off the earth. So the road, the rollout was one of the most poorly rolled out things that I can imagine that I've ever seen really, especially man, for how many users they have. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was just and, me. <clears throat> yeah, no, 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 no. The rollout was terrible. And, and it was forced on you without any recourse, without any empathy at all, without any kind of like improvements. Like they didn't really improve between the GA3 and the GA4 version. They basically made a much worse version that was starting from scratch. And then they're starting to roll stuff in now. So like even today or like yesterday, they rolled out some new features. They roll out about ten, five, 10 different features each, you know, five to 10 different features a um, a month that yeah. come out. And so they're rolling it out and wow. they're basically like, it's like they told you that you can't, you have to get rid of all your stuff by by next year. But, the, but it's, I wouldn't necessarily move over to the new platform right now. So it's like, they want you to collect the data. They want you to use it, but it's not the same. It's not as good as the other one. Wow. What are some, oh my goodness. I, I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm so, I've got to thank you for a minute. There were so many questions going through my mind as you were talking. I thought I was the only one who thought that it was a pushed out too soon. I thought, you know, and, and to hear that it's not even as, because I've been ignoring it because <laughs> I know how challenging it is. And I'm like, wow, this is so flipping overwhelming. And, and uh, yeah. here's the question. Okay. So people are, Google is saying what, July 1st, 2023? Yep. And, and, and we are in uh, November of 2022 right now. Mm -hmm. And my question, here's my question. If someone hasn't updated already, are they going to be losing data? Because they, like they could should for instance should they have put GA four on their site six months ago even at least the the tag the script to be track to be collecting the data and if they haven't yeah. there's going to be an empty window of no data is what I'm trying to ask hundred percent yeah they won't be able to do I mean they, they won't be able to do year over year comparisons year over year. they won't be able to, they won't be able to quickly say how did I do July versus this year versus last year that's that's pretty much for certain if they haven't moved over yet. Um, if you look at built with stats, 18% as of today of all of the top 1 million websites have GA4 on installed. 
versus eighty five percent have GA three installed. And so we're so, you know about about two out of or about four out of every five people have not installed it yet. So people are resisting. Yeah, they're, they're, I think everybody's waiting till next year. They don't really care about this year. They're waiting the until there's something there. Like, you know, they're waiting until the Shopify integration is better. They're waiting until the integration on their content management system works. They're waiting for these, they're waiting for an easy button. Um, yeah. Which, frankly, the platforms are all sleeping. I don't understand why why they haven't started to do stuff, why they haven't supported it. It's really you annoying. You mean like, platforms like Shopify or Facebook or... Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. I mean... These. exactly yeah i mean okay. facebook supports it actually pretty well with their server side solution they um yeah well yeah there's a whole bunch of facebook nuance like but oh, okay. uh yeah essentially they're they're um they are piggybacking on ga4 to do their server side tracking mechanism for the conversions api so they're they're oh. actually probably one of the most advanced use cases and then if you want to run facebook ads utms are utm so that will still work yeah. the the yeah. campaign codes but okay. um, yeah, they're yeah, but it's it's more like it's more content management systems. Like almost none of them support it in a meaningful way. Okay. Has anything about GA4 surprised you thus far? Um, I'm surprised by that they. I'm surprised that how. I'm surprised by how sunny of a picture it will be once everything works. <laughs> It is a complete oh. re-architecting. It is a complete reimagination. They have machine learning built in where if you can get your e-commerce data coming in or your in-app purchase data, they'll predict uh -huh. if somebody's going to buy in the next seven days and you can spit that out mm -hmm. for your remarketing to them. You can actually wow. like find people who are about to buy based on their behavior. So they're doing a lot of computations for you. I do like how they give a like big query so you can export data a lot easier than ever before. Um, uh -huh. I'm surprised by how tightly integrated it is, it is with all the Google products. So like nearly yeah. every Google product has a feature that's integrated with GA4 better than the universal version. Yet so no other console and software. tag manager? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they're as good, if not better. Wow. <clears throat> is it so basic? <clears throat> Excuse me, I, I'm losing my voice. Um, because it's uh, it's pretty much everybody has to start over. Has it leveled the playing field then? Like everybody's at ground zero, including? Yeah, and not only is it leveling the playing field, but it's a fresh start that we all needed. And it's an opportunity okay. for you to finally have your analytics tool match your company strategy. So what I do a lot in our teaching and our live stuff and our demos is I, I'll actually show you how you can completely customize the reports menu to only show okay. things that matter to your company. So if you have four KPIs, you can make it so that every other report is turned off on GA4 and all you see is those four KPIs. You can make it so that the charts are got, gotten rid of. You can make it so that you, only the metrics you care, you can remove metrics. So you could actually only show your users four reports and it's all that matters to your company. And you can name it however you want to name it. So the interface is, is very customizable in a way that was never done before. So you can basically say, here's all you care about. Here's all you need to look at. Okay. So I have a question. When I was running Google Ads for the dealership that I was working at, I I had um, created different views in Google Analytics. Um, I kind of followed the advice. Not only did I you know, learn from you, but also Manchu Sharma from OptimizeSmart.com. Uh, he talked about creating 10 different views in Google Analytics. One was a target market view. Uh, another one was a test view, raw data view, you know, and and yep. another would be a a Google Ads view. So I connected that view, and that view had specific goals uh, that were only pertinent and relevant to Google Ads because I had other view goals in the target market view that that weren't yep. necessarily connect. You know, I didn't want them. I didn't want them counting as conversions and so on and so forth. But you know, <clears throat> so that was good. I had call tracking, all these things set up. But I know that Google view, views have been removed from. Am I, yeah, am I no wrong? Views. Like they're, they're, so, so yeah. how do you, so what's the solution now then? What's the process uh, in that, for that, well, in that regard? Yeah. So for every one case study of somebody using views appropriately, like you mentioned and effectively I've, yeah. and I've been in thousands of accounts. I've, it's probably, there's probably 10 that do it poorly and wrong yeah. and in a use, useless way. So a lot of people okay. will get filters wrong. 
Um, yeah, I, filters yeah, are basically like un, they're, they're completely neutered in 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 GA four. They're really not. Oh. They don't really work very well, and they're um, that you don't have the same filtering capabilities, the same amount of stuff you can do. Um, it's really okay. just like internal traffic and a few other things. And not only that, but um, so filters are are not they're neutered. Let's just say, but okay. also you have properties, there is no sub property or no view unless you buy the 360 or the, the, the premium version of GA4. Yeah. And so I'm still coming up with my opinion as to whether we need them, what the workarounds are and so on and so forth. Um, okay. I actually don't really think that, I don't think you really need views. I think, I don't think most people needed three views in the past. Like I always advocated okay. it, but I also don't think that people used it properly. So I think for 90% of users not having a, to worry about views is a good thing um, okay. for the 10% who extended it. The functionality of a view is there. It's just harder to find. So it, it exists in a few different places. So for example, it exists in the exploration reports. You can, you can filter an exploration report and get the equivalent of what you're looking at. You can get your target market. Like you're talking about, you can get ads only, like you can build those reports and then they're just permanently, you can just like one click away from those reports. So there's, there, it's, okay. it's not that bad. Um, you can create the new audience section where you create, or you can create in, how do I call it? Audiences. You can okay. use those as segmentations and you can view your data that way. There's not as many issues with sampling as there used to be. So I think yeah. you can get, you can get to where you're looking at and you can actually probably do it in a more efficient way. Um, yeah. in a way that, that where your goals are not like all over the place, they're not different and so on. The other thing you can yeah. do is you can create a second property and okay. data stream and just double tag to within the same one. Um, that's something that I am experimenting with having a second property and using that for, um, for, for cross domain tracking or for, yeah. for, um, basically roll up reporting. So there okay. are some options to get around it. Um, but none of them are officially sanctioned. So I think what's ended up happening is if you created 10 views, you might create three properties and same effect. Oh. oh, sorry. You froze out there for a sec. Uh, you said you might create, instead of creating 10 views, you'd have different properties. Yeah. I could see somebody who, who was, who was sophisticated, like you were at the yeah. dealership, I could see you having more than one property and then triple okay. track or double triple tracking in order to get those different, the equivalent of a view or the equivalent of a roll up property. Okay. Um, what's the best way to learn GA4? I mean, I'm biased. So I, I think our stuff is, is the best. Um, okay. We have, we have, like I said, we have multiple ways to do it. So I, I have a bunch of videos about GA4 on my YouTube channel. We okay. have our, we have a bunch of free resources on our on our blog. Our blog okay. is very well trafficked around GA4. Um, there's tons of blogs out there though. Um, you mentioned yeah. Optimize Smart. That's a good one. Analytics Mania is good. Measure yeah. School is good. Krista mm -hmm. Seiden is good. Simo Ahava is good. Charles yeah. Farina when he on Twitter is really good. Fred Pike really good. Um, trying to think of yeah. Those are the sort of the oh, main yeah. suspects. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. Benjamin Mangold at at uh, Loves Data is really good. There's so many good people out there, um, yeah. friends of mine, contemporaries. Um, and then a lot of them offer a course, you know, and, yeah. and I mean, I think you should pay something for a course because it helps the, the instructors go like there, you can get cheap Absolutely. courses on like Udemy or whatever, but yeah, I think that, they're you know, not very good. Under to $500 to a thousand dollars for a course will really help you cement it. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have our cohort courses where we teach it live and we, okay. we have a community around it. And I think that's really cool because you get to meet other people, you get to network, you can find opportunities through that. Um, so we we do that. Um, so if you wanted to, to subscribe with us, we can sort of take yeah. you through the whole journey. And then if there's other, you know, there's other people out there for sure that I, I definitely think you can check out too. Where can people go if they want to get more information like about that, signing up for your course? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can Is there a specific data URL? You can go to datadrivenu.com and then... Um, we have, you can get on our newsletter and we, we email our whole newsletter whenever we have a new product offering, um, okay. depending on when you get on the newsletter. We also, um, if you, if you like where to go to our blog and there's an exit intent pop-up that will get you into our migration guide and that'll okay. get you onto our email list too. So there's a lot of different ways okay. to get in there. And we, we, we do a weekly newsletter of just general okay. purpose knowledge. And then we do promotions 
whenever we have something to provide the community. Okay, right on. Fantastic. Um, what did, what tips or advice can you offer to those who are migrating to GA4 but haven't done so yet? Yeah, um, I think that if you try to match up your U, junior, your GA4 to your universal analytics or GA3 exactly yeah. one-to-one, you're going to find that it's like pulling your hair out, frustrating yeah. and not, okay. not the greatest way to go because it was yeah. never, it's, it's really meant to be a replacement. So I'd almost look at it as um, like the Marie Kondo. I always say, like, if it doesn't bring you joy, let it go. <laughs> you okay. know, so if, if, if you don't get joy in the metrics you have right now, just get rid of them. Okay. And this okay. Is, again, this is the one time you can just reduce it down to what really matters to you. So before you even program it or before you even put code on your site, maybe write down what are the things that I actually want to measure. And okay. I'll tell you that, 98, 98% of that does now exist in GA4. So it's there. Okay. Might be a little bit buried. Um, but just really get back to like, hey, this is the first opportunity you've had in ever however many years to start fresh and to start with exactly what you want to measure. Never used to be able to do that before. And okay. if you look at that way, then your analytics doesn't need to be complicated. It actually can be a lot simpler. Okay. Let me put this to you then. And I always got to bring it back to my experience. This is the only thing I know. When I was at the dealership, again, I had all these goals set up. I had, you would be amazed at how many conversions dealers have. They have four different web forms for one single product page, which we call the vehicle detail page. That was the single yep. product page for the car industry. And there was four different ways, like I'm interested, whatever. I had four goals set up because there was four different con- thank you URLs, different confirmation URLs for each of those. I had those goals set up. I had uh, time on site goals set up. I had, uh, not only did I have VDP view set up, I had uh, uh, goals for uh, the search results pages. So SRPs. And then I had goals for new and used for both of those uh, and, and for the KPI so that I could see how much traffic was coming to those SRPs for new and used and how much traffic was coming to those VDPs, new and used. And I had them segmented by model type for new and by vehicle type for used. And I was putting all that data into data studio. And I also was tracking the phone calls. So I was tracking the phone calls and the leads and so on and so forth. I had to do all that because quite frankly, the sales managers didn't think I knew what I was doing. I was trying to get me fired. But anyway, uh, and yet I, I blew their dealership up with leads anyway. But the point I'm trying to make Jeff here is like, you mentioned like, there's no way I could probably do all those things in GA4. I don't even know. So would the better route be for people to actually go take their data if they haven't done it already, map their KPIs in something like Data Studio so then later on they can, when they add GA4, they can create some of the similar KPIs and tracking in, in GA4 and, and, and being able to see similar data in Google Data Studio. Is that even possible? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a lot, right? So So I would say that some of that is capable in GA4. Some of it is capable by integrating with other systems, right? So okay. you do have the ability in GA4 to pull in custom metrics and custom dimensions. So you can, if you if you're tagging your site yeah. with something, the tagging ultimately <laughs> can you can say this person, you can any if any one of those things is known before the data goes into GA4, you can put the data okay. into GA4 and you can use okay. it as a as a dimension. Now it may not be, is it useful to do that on a, you know, to tie that to a page level? So like an event on a page, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe that's better being in your database. Now with GA4, it really is a good collection mechanism, a good collection hub for your data. You have a lot more generous rules with custom dimensions and metrics and so okay. on. You get up to 50 of them each. And then you can, you know, you can do a lot with them. Um, so there's, there's, and those, there's parameters up to 25 parameters on each event. So there's all kinds okay. of stuff you can do. If you map that out and say the best place to hold that is in GA4, then yes, you would want to store it in there because it's a good store of data. And with the ability to access it through BigQuery, you can easily okay. query that and butt it up against your other systems. So you could, okay. you could, do, you could do a query with your big query and then your customer database or your auto database query those together and then spit that out to data studio. Yes. So it depends okay. on, 
if your analysis okay. is done, where your analysis is done and where you want right. that to be there. I would say at the okay. very least, you can attach data from one system into GA4 and it'll be more useful if you do that before you collect it. Um, okay. And a lot of that is possible, yes. It's a little bit more okay. frustrating. It's it's more work to set it up than it was, than it maybe okay. it was before. But then again, these things, what you just described is not like an, a, a one day setup. That was a... Uh, oh, a lot, yeah. a lot of work to pull that together, right? So oh, um, yeah. it's almost like a business. You need to do a business analysis as to what yeah. you want, and then yeah, I mean, good GA four can do most of it. It's actually, I think, more capable in many ways than 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 Universal was as far as what yeah. you can put into it. But also, expectations are a little bit more. There's not as many code base examples. There's not as many people who yeah. are showing their experimentation. There's not as much show and tell with right GA4 now. yet because it's still wow. everybody's just figuring yeah. it out. Wow. Okay. I was laughing by the way cuz the dealership they 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 I don't think they had any idea the sophisticated level of marketing that I was running because they didn't they don't know what they don't know. They I yeah. and I probably at that time didn't know how to communicate what I was doing. Which here's another thing I did and I'd like to know if this is possible. Again, and I'm asking because I don't know, and maybe our our audience would like to know a case study, a case use case like this. Like, for instance, I set up custom dimensions so that I, I Jeff, I set up custom dimensions and reporting so that the sales managers would be able to know what the if if there was a, a I set it up on the VIN specific level so that they would know if there was if they were desking a deal. And for those people who don't know, desking a deal is when someone's trying to sell a car and they're writing up the paper, they're writing up the numbers. Uh, so that they could hold gross on that number. Cause if they knew that that was a, like I was, I was, I set it up so that they could know how much traffic was coming to that specific vehicle on a VIN level. Mm. And I also set up reports to send them on a daily basis, what the top 10 most popular used vehicles were and the top 10 most popular used and new again, mm. by model type model and, and vehicle type uh, using custom dimensions in universal analytics. To your knowledge is that, possible in GA4? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're, yeah, I mean, if you're capturing, okay. if they're on a page, you can capture the VIN okay. of All that right. page of that vehicle on in GA4. Yeah. Okay. You can tie so, that. Sorry to, if it's a, you can run a report yeah. on it. Yeah. Sorry if it's a dumb question. I just, I've really been ignoring GA4 to the point that I don't even know <laughs> what it is, Bob. I'm probably going to I mean, take your no, course. I mean, the, the custom dimensions and metrics are, Essentially, I mean, the big difference is that they're like in GA Universal, this is yeah. getting to be sort of in the weeds, but there's multiple hit types. There's session, user, yes, and uh, page or whatever. Now, now I'm like trying to remember what they were. And then there's only That's event okay. hit types in, in GA4. Oh, right? okay. So they, they've consolidated down into one hit type. Oh. That hit can be tied. You can do a user-based dimension and a product or a page-based or event-based dimension. And so um, that dimension could be a user property or the page they're on property. You can do both of them. You can run reports off of it. There's some weird things where it's going to, it's not going to be, since you can't tie it to a session or you can't tie it in the same way, there might not be a one-to-one matchup, but it's pretty similar and pretty close to how they go. Okay. What are your thoughts on other web analytics platforms such as Adobe Analytics, Clicky, Matomo, or Mixpanel? Yeah. Um, I did a whole series on this. I think I compared 42 different ones um, oh, wow. on my YouTube channel. And the bottom line is that. my theory is that the second you have to pay, even if it's $9 a month, people are out. They want GA. Um, no other tool integrates with Google products as well. Google is still That's, by far the number one advertising platform. So if you're running Google ads, Google yeah. Analytics is a no brainer. Um, other ones can't integrate the same way that, that Google does because they're not native integrations or products. Yeah. Um, I think that the other ones are just have their hands tied behind their back because if they have to charge money, they have to charge money to make money and do. get engineers and stuff like that. And, and Google gives you this for free. I mean, Google's probably eating, you know, but maybe like 50 bucks a month per user of Google analytics, I would assume like they're, wow. they're spending that much money, right? Like it has to be in the, in the 10 to $15 per user. I mean, if they're, you know, they probably spend a billion dollars a year on analytics and 
if they have 150 million users, that that adds up pretty fast, right? It's probably well, maybe maybe they spend more than that. You know, it's it's a lot of money wow. that goes into storing your data, and so yeah, they they absolutely have an advantage by making that a loss leader. So that yeah. I think every other argument around functionality and features, those arguments only really come into play if you're willing to spend money for this thing. And most people okay. that I've talked to aren't. Aren't. Setting the cost of money aside and the people, the fact that people don't want to spend the money, do you think they should, that businesses should have more than one source of data in order to correlate to, in order to, you know, verify the data rather than just one? Yeah. I mean, like, I've, but, I've said forever that Google Analytics is never, should never really be your primary source of data. It's actually okay. the, it's, it's not, it's not the best source of data, it's, but it's the only one that touches on everything. So if you want to know how your ads performed, your ad platform is going to be better, but GA can back it up. If you want to know okay. how SEO is, SEO traffic can come from Google ads, but cons, you know, or it can come in from Google analytics, but your search console data might is probably more absolute or your ranking data. Those things from other systems usually are better. If you want to know okay. how your emails performed, you can, you know, you can get open and click rates from your email platform and those compare to GA, right? So GA yeah. is sort of like a verification on everything else you're doing. Um, it's really not giving you anything you wouldn't be able to find elsewhere. If you're, you know, if you have an e-commerce platform, that all resides in there. If you have a lead gen platform, that data should all reside in your CRM. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> hey, uh, what should agencies and businesses do to prepare for the release of GA4? Um, I think... It really depends on where you're at. If you're an agency, you should learn how to offer this as a service because there's um, 844,210 people as of the time wow. we record this who need your help. Yeah. At least that's of the top million websites. 844,000 haven't moved yet. Um, wow. So like figure out how to do this, offer it as a service, pitch it and do it. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely have a program that does that. I'd love for yeah. anybody who's interested to join it because that we we actually go through like what the services are you offer, how much to charge for it, what how to generate leads of your existing customers and how to sell it. Um, yeah. It's like a live course we do. Also get certified if you get your employees certified so they know what they're doing. So take either my course or another one that's similar to it. Okay. Um, and then... And then if you're, you know, so that that's what I would say for an agency is just get the knowledge in place because it's going to be harder to get the knowledge and more urgent next year than it is now. So do it as soon as possible. People think that wow. July 1 is like everybody's going to be moved over by July 1, 2023. <laughs> no, that's maybe 50% of people will be moved over by then. The rest of them right. are going to log in on July 2 and notice they have no data and then they're going to start gonna panic people up, you know. So, so there's going to be more demand than than any other thing that's ever happened in the internet. Wow! Uh, in the next year and a half. Wow, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. What's one big takeaway you want listeners to get from this episode? Um, if there I, is I, one you haven't mentioned already, yeah. People should use GA4 as their primary analytics tool. They should they should yeah. just install it, bite the bullet, try it out. Um, okay. and, and use it. And then if they can't find something, go back to universal. But mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, most features are there now. You just had to learn how to find it. If you need help okay. with that, then 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 take a training to do it. It'll get you there faster without a lot of the trial and error and frustration. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, how, how can our listeners connect with you online if they choose to do so? Sure. They can definitely go to datadrivenu.com and get on our newsletter. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and if you want to. I'm Jeff Sauer, LinkedIn.com slash in slash Jeff Sauer. I have a okay. YouTube channel that that I think is really helpful. Um, we republish once a week, and those should be the ways they can get a hold of me. Right on, right on, right on. Hey, thank you so much for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Uh, thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for having me. This is great. I really appreciate yeah, right it. Right on.